Hey guys, you know what? I decided I don't have enough projects going on, so I'm going to start another one. But in all seriousness, this is a set that I've had in my possession for quite a while. So I, most of the sets I've been working on for the past two years, really, have all belonged to one collector, and I've been slipping other sets in between. Well, right about the same time, his last batch of sets came in is the GE Locomotive, the Philco, the two RCAs, the Sony that ended up being empty, and so on, uh, the, the Sentinel 7-inch Portable, the Halicrafters, all belonged to him. Right about the same time those were dropped off, another one was, and it belongs it's, uh, to a gentleman who drove all the way up from Texas, and he's going to be coming back up this way in uh, six weeks, seven weeks, something like that. He asked if I could have it ready for him by then, and I said sure. Uh, and I've started tinkering around it a little bit, but I have not posted a proper video on it. So what is it? It is an RCA 721 TS, which is their 10-inch set from 1947. It's basically a year, two years newer than the two RCAs that have been working on on a chassis for one of which is right next to it. Got the chassis out pretty quickly because the two front chassis bolts were missing. There's two back ones. I'll replace those. Remember to disconnect the antenna terminals up here otherwise because it's this hardwired to the chassis. You know, if you just pull the chassis it's going to rip that apart. It was a mouse house at some point unfortunately. We got a little bit of bedding, some droppings clean that out, otherwise it's rather clean inside. All right, let's look at the chassis. Uh, all right, so big old power transformers on that side, and this is where the uh, high power resistors are located. I think we're all tipping on this side. No, I see, I see some of these models. That's the um, horizontal oscillator coil, and there's a couple of bolts sticking out, so you really don't want to tip it on this side unless you put some padding in there and the other side is the antenna input so what I got into the habit of doing I have some scraps of styrofoam and when I lean the chassis over I, I throw those under it to keep pressure off the wire air fasteners. Those early RCAs go this is a relatively lightweight small chassis and fan Fantastic. It is all original. There we go. That's what you want to see. I temporarily disconnected some wires so I could isolate the sections. These two are definitely open, and that larger section down there is open. These two sections seem to be okay. So, what I did is just tack power resistors in parallel <laughs> with uh, the, the uh, open sections. So I just used the two 1Ks I had on hand. Yeah, it should be 620 and 1125, but just better than it being open. And I did have the exact 8200 value for that guy. The set is on. <laughs> yeah, they're getting a little toasty. Uh, and... Hey, 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 that's the brightness control. So, <laughs> that'll be much more pleasant to work on now. Okay, so we found a bunch of open power resistors. I've ordered up some replacements. We have a raster. We have yet to hear a peep out of that speaker. I think I know why. Let's verify it. I think we have a bad audio output transformer. It's this little guy right here. So, meter, continuity, primary. It's these two heavier wires coming out. They're going right over the 6K6 tube socket here. It's actually these cap leads either side of it. And, yeah, it's open. So, got to replace it. Well, here are all the tubes that tested in the reject 
region, especially all three of the six AG5s are nearly dead. I'm really curious to once we get the set uh, working to pop these in and see what kind of performance we get. Uh, well, I had the set uh, upright. I did a little test cleaning. This thing is... I'm not quite sure what this is. That's from Texas. It's dry and dusty, I guess. But, uh... Yeah, it's, I don't think it's... It might be some what from cigarettes, but I know I smell and it's not quite sticky. And it's not corrosion. It's just like... Like this thing was out in the desert or something. <laughs> so, uh, I'm trying a variety of cleaning products. Things like alcohol don't really do anything. Uh, usual CLR does a pretty good job. It just takes a while. But it, it, it does do a fine job. Strong cleaners? No, like Simple Green? Uh, not really doing it. So again, I'm not really sure what's going on there. But underneath that, it's in rather good condition. No corrosion. And the uh, plating's in good shape. All right, let's uh, get back under the chassis to finish a recap. Here are the two I've done so far. So it looked like from the top side. And Alrighty, there we go. All wired back in. Now let's make sure it still works. It's not going to focus too well with this little baby test CRT. I'm just kind of focusing on the contrast. No pun intended there. Yeah, aside from the vertical linearity, it's, it's looking promising. On the main cabinet, I went around all the edges and glued down, and even near there was getting a little bit loose, and then I put some hand cleaner on it, this stuff in particular, the pumice free variety and a lot of gunk is coming off but you can see underneath that that lacquer finish is really crazed and that's why I'm thinking or I intend to clear coat over this with some fresh lacquer to help stabilize all that otherwise it will eventually start flaking off and we do have a little bit of loss in this area where some finish already has flaked off that will just continue to get worse and worse unless something is done to stabilize it and here is the rest of it this inner part came out great this came out pretty good decals are more visible now but most importantly it stabilized I don't know why, maybe it was the type of wood they used, or from all the handling in this area, I don't know, but the finish is really flaking off down in here, so I did the best I could to stabilize it while doing a little bit of cleaning, but I could not be anywhere near as aggressive as I was up here. But anyway, for eh, about two, three hours work, not bad, not bad. So now we can start putting it all back together. Well, I have some bad news. Got the picture doom mounted securely, just fine. So that doesn't work. So, out she's got to come. And it's got to be something pretty system-wide because there was no sound. There was no hum or buzz out of the speaker. And if I turn off the lights, you guys probably can't even see that. There's just barely a hint of illumination on the CRT face. So, <laughs> that's what happens. That's what happens. You just, if you want to get into this hobby, be prepared for frustration. Uh, it's not uncommon. You have the set on the workbench, get it all tuned up working properly, put it all back together, it doesn't work anymore. Okay, after replacing the week 6 SN7, I put the cage cover back on and went through the adjustments again. Then I tightened down all the bolts and screws, put the front cover back on, had to repair the antenna terminals. 
but it's all back together and working quite well now. So <laughs> there were a lot of unexpected twists and turns in this project, but in the end, it plays really well. It's a really nice set. The cabinet touch up came out uh, looking great. And the picture tube, which it tested weak initially, still seems to have a lot of life left. Replacing the audio output transformer really did the trick. The sound is great now. Purple, purple. <laughs> and uh, rebuilding that high voltage, or not high voltage, but the uh, power supply bleeder network was a fun little challenge. The owner uh, opted to not put a cover on the back of it because uh, of where it's going to be positioned. It's just really not an issue for him, so that's fine. Oh, yeah, I put a new power cord on. These uh, nice fasteners on it. So, uh, like I said, it was a bit more involved than I was expecting, but in the end, it turned out really, really nice. I hope you guys enjoyed the journey. Thanks for watching. So that's a wrap.